using the acronym EASTER, E-A-S-T-E-R, um, I just wanted to start off with, and, okay, so, recording just for, for this, not anything else, just for the, um, this, this sermon itself. Just want to um, give God all the glory and all the praise and all the honor he's been with us on this Resurrection Sunday. Lord God, I just pray right now that you would just have your way, Lord God, and that you anoint this short portion here, Lord Jesus Christ, as we continue to recognize what you've done for us and to give you all the honor and the glory in Jesus' precious name. And that is what I said. Amen. Amen. Okay, so I wanted to just do the acronym E-A-S-T-E-R. The first letter, E. Exhausted, that's what came to me. It was just coming to me in about five minutes or less, all of this came to me, and I know that is the Holy Spirit, so he gets all the glory. Amen. The first letter of the word is the E. Exhausted. Who was exhausted? Jesus was exhausted. He had spent the night in the Garden of Gethsemane, as you remember seeing and reading from the word and from this um this short film, he had no sleep. His disciples slept. And he was in agony. He agonized over what he had been called to do. He knew what his mission was from day one. But now the moment had come where he had to go through all of this for you, me, and myself. There were sweat drops coming down from his face. And the Bible tells us, and we're going to look at it in Luke 22, 44, that these sweat drops were like blood coming from his face. And you're like, what on earth? Is that, is that normal? And I believe in reading, and I'm not going to be too long, that there are some people who have experienced this in life. And they call the term hematodrosis. And it's where the blood vessels that feed the sweat glands rupture due to physical or emotional stress. So Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane agonizing over this whole journey that he was about to embark on. He knew that this was now the last day. This was what he was to do. And we can see that in Luke 22 and verse 44. And um, let's read that together. Luke 22. Verse 44. Let's read together. <clears throat> and being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood falling down. Falling down to the ground. Can you imagine that? Anyway. He was brought to the high priest's house. Remember now, he was up all night in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was a Sabbath source, but he was up all night. So then he was brought to the high priest's house, and he stays up all night again. He didn't have a choice. He was mocked, as you can remember seeing in that film, and from the word. He was hit, he was blindfolded, hit in the face, flogged. The Bible calls it scourging. And just to tell you briefly, with scourging, what they did was they had these leather straps as the handles, and they would have 12 pieces from that strap that when they flogged somebody, those, at the end of those pieces, you have little bones that it's not just that you're going to just get a little bit, but you're also going to get, it's going to cut into the flesh. So now I don't, 
I, I don't want to, to have anybody here who may be on the source. I remember years ago, I had the warmest time watching the crucifixion. And I would just weep and weep. And I could hardly even look at it. And I remember our former pastor, well, actually, her daughter, who became pastor after her death, she said, we're going to show the passion at church. Anybody has seen the passion of Christ? We're going to show it. And I don't want you to close your eyes. I don't want you to turn your head away. Because I want you to understand what your Savior went through for you. And so we were like, I don't know, I was thinking, I don't know if I can do this. So, if, you know, we were all sitting there. And so we were trying to watch it, and we did. But you could hear. <laughs> going throughout. I think some of the men might have been doing it who cried. But it is, it is just so, you know, natural that you would feel all of that that he went through and, and he did go through it. He was very God but very mad. That's why he came in the flesh so he could feel what you and I feel. Anyway, so the Romans though believed in doing it a little bit more than the Jews. So when they that's I think they're the ones that put the little bones at the end of those little strips so that they would do the work and be effective for what they wanted. Sometimes people would they would want them to confess or do whatever it is. And so they were just, it was harder when the Romans did it. So anyway, also you, you remember hearing about the crown of thorns that day, and you saw it pierced, they put on his head, and that pierced his head. The cross that he, talked about exhaustion, the cross that he wore for you, 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 and myself, I looked it up, it weighed 165 pounds. Is that, is that heavy or is that heavy? Not to mention the fact that he already was carrying all this and feeling, you know. Okay, so it is not known exactly how long he carried that cross. You remember one person was asked to help him, Simon? Yes, because he kind of fell under the weight of it, so he carried it. Boy, what a privilege. Would you have liked to have helped Jesus carry the cross? Anybody would have liked to have helped him? I think I would have liked to have helped him. You know, to me that would have been such an honor. But um, it took about maybe one to three hours to have it. So, I'm just going to move on briefly. A. The next letter at Easter is A, anxious. Who were anxious? Was Jesus anxious? He was exhausted, but was he anxious? That would more be the disciples, you think? Why were they anxious? They saw all this happening, and if you remember from the film and the word, when, when, when he was actually arrested and seized, they ran, they all ran. Would you have run, or would you have stayed with Anybody would have stayed there? I think we all would have ran. Mm -hmm. Even though we said, now we can say, no, 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 I would, have stood, I would have stood right there and defended my Lord. We would have ran. What do you think? So they ran. They were scared. I mean, if they identified with him, they would have been arrested as well. So they left him. Matthew 26, 56. I'm just going to do like one scripture and move on to the S. They were anxious. What does it say? But all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Read with me. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. Right. All right. So, S. E A S. S. What came to me was suspense. Peter followed Jesus at a distance. Everybody else had run. Yeah, they're gone. But he was always the curious one. You remember? Peter was always getting it to stop, wasn't he? He's like, I gotta, I gotta see what's gonna happen next. I just, I, 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 I mean, really? Are, are they really gonna? Are, are they gonna? He never rested in. Really? Is this, is this going to really happen? Hold on. Still didn't, didn't understand what Jesus was trying to tell him and the others. 
I am going to be crucified. I'm going to die. It still didn't get it. So he followed Jesus at a distance. He wanted to see how things would turn out. Sometimes you and I are in suspense. We don't know what God is going to do. We really don't, don't, don't know what he'll do about your situation, you know, our situations. We don't know how things are going to pan out, so we're in suspense. Peter was in suspense. Matthew 26 and 69 tells us about that. Let's read that. Matthew 26 and verse 69. Now, let's read it, everybody. Now Peter sat without in the palace, that means outside, and the damsel came unto him saying, that also was with Jesus of Galilee. So I'm just using this to show you that he was nearby when all this was happening to Jesus. Yeah, I'm going to have to watch. I, 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 I'm watching to see how things work out. So, so like, I mean, really, no. i got to see this. Okay, next one. T. What came to me was triumph. Luke 24, 1 to 3. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And verse three. That was three. All of three, one to three? Okay. So, they went in. They went to the grave. They're thinking, I'm gonna, we're going to put some spices on the bo this, this body, rather, so that it won't smell. It won't, you know when someone dies, you can't just leave it like that. You can't leave the body like that. Okay. You have to apply certain things and make it presentable, make the body presentable, etc. So that's what they went to do. So the triumph was that they came to the tomb and the stone was rolled away. If, if the stone was still there, right, it would have meant that Jesus was still dead. E, excited. Oh my goodness. Who were excited? Who were excited? Who was excited? Do you know? So, everybody was excited. Yes. Let's look at John chapter 20, verses 1 to 4. And then after that, we just have the R. So, all right. So, this is John chapter 20. You read with me, the first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark unto the sepulchre, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Then she did what? She runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciples whom Jesus loved and said unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple, which was John, and came to the sepulchre. Is that the last verse? Oh, we have one more verse. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulchre. So was there some excitement going on? You're like, oh my goodness gracious. We can't see this for ourselves. What is happening? So there is that excitement right there. Then the last one is the letter of what? R for? Resurrection. Aha! Uh -huh. Wait, that just me start to break. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so resurrection. All right. Let's look at John chapter 20, verses 11 to 18, and we're going to be finished. All right, let's read. But Mary stood without at the sepulchre, weeping. And she, as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre, and seeth two angels in white sitting 
the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Ah! Keep going. Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Who seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said unto her, Mary. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. Amen. So, wow, that's a mouthful right there. Can you imagine the excitement that day over the resurrection of our Lord? Woo! Can you feel what they felt? Woo! My Jesus. So, you've heard this Easter message a million times, I'm sure. But you know what? It never gets stale, does it? Doesn't get stale. Hmm, my God. It, it would, this week it seemed to me like we were walking through this whole week with Jesus, with all these things happening. We started last week with Palm Sunday, and it just seemed like, even though it happened so many years ago, that it was happening all over again. Oh, wow, that's just amazing. And so I pray that the Easter message will not just be something that you do out of routine. You're coming to church on Easter Sunday will not just be because well, it's Easter, but because the spirit of Easter is beckoning you and speaking into the recesses of your being. And Jesus Christ is, although he was crucified, he's risen. But we need not skip over the crucifixion. We need to tag with the whole concept of what he did for me, you, and myself. We need to understand fully the, 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 his sacrifice of himself. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You have heard that so many times. But I pray that if you hear it today and you do not know him as your Savior, that it will not go in this ear and come out of this ear. I pray instead it will go down into the depths of your being and that it will minister to you, it will speak to you. The Lord Jesus himself will speak to you and let you know that you need to come to him as your Savior, know him. And you can know him today. You don't have to wait till next Easter. You don't have to wait till maybe a few months down the road when it feels right to you. Because the Bible says, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart, as in the provocation, back in the, in the Old Testament. He was telling them that. Today, tomorrow is not promised. We make plans. You and I make plans, but honestly, we don't even know if we have the next five minutes. We have seen people, we have seen relatives of ours who went on recently that didn't even have five minutes, and they were gone. So today, on Easter Sunday, Easter 2024, this is an opportunity for those who do not know Jesus Christ to understand the work, the ministry, the call that was on Jesus' life to buy your redemption and mine. 
give your heart to him today? It's not really hard. I don't know why it becomes so complicated. It shouldn't be. It should be really simple. The Bible says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All of us. But there is, there is a solution. We don't have to stay in our sin. And whether you say you've sinned or not, guess what? If we say we do not have sin, the Bible says, we call God a liar. He's telling us we have sin, and we say, no, we haven't. So we're calling him a liar. And he's not a man that he should lie. So he says there's sin, and we cannot meet his righteous expectations. They can only be met through Jesus Christ, through the finished work of Calvary. So, why not come to him today if you don't know him? Why not give your heart to him? There's no one like him. He's the only one that can wash away your sin, make you clean, make you whole. So, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your attention. And may the Lord bless you all. Hallelujah. So I don't know if there's anybody here who would like to ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart today. I'm telling you, don't put it off. Don't say I don't really feel it. Not today. It's so easy to say not today. It's so easy to procrastinate. So easy, but that's the enemy whispering in your ear and saying, no, 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 you don't need to do it. No, we don't do it. No, it's embarrassing. No, we don't do it. Mm -hmm. Give your heart to him. Don't you listen to the enemy. Listen to the Spirit of God speaking to you and drawing you to him. Mm -hmm. So if there's anybody here who wants to do so, you don't want to, if you want to raise your hand and say you want to do so, that's fine. Praise God. Thank you. I saw that hand. You know, it gives me great joy. It gives me great joy. Hallelujah, thank you, God. Is there anybody else you would like to raise your hand and say you would like to give your heart to the Lord today? I'm telling you, you will not forget it. Now.